ladies and gentlemen, I managed to play every single healer hero talent spec in the game right now in the War Within beta. And in this video, I'm combining the footage from all of them, taking a look on how they affect the gameplay and how the talents change the playstyles. A lot of effort went into the creation of this video, so if you like it or you find it useful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's get on with it. The whole tree revolves around summoning ancestrals to help you heal and you do that by using the Unleash Life spell. As you know, that's a talent that we don't run in dungeons, so I was very reluctant to do so, but in order to test this, I had to drop my undulation and pick Unleash Wife. And I must say, it didn't actually feel bad at all. In fact, I'm a heavy chain heal caster, so I didn't get much value from undulation anyway, so from that perspective, it didn't feel like I'm losing a lot to have the ancestors. However, I will say that this is adding a new button that you have to press in Mythic Plus, which adds to the bloat of skills that you have to use, and that was something that hero talents were supposed to avoid. And that's probably the biggest criticism that I have of this, but once you get used to it, it's actually quite good to use Unleash Wife and summon the ancestors because that's on-demand healing that you get whenever you need it. The cooldown of Unleash Life is only 15 seconds, so you can basically summon the Ancestors every time you need a little bit of extra help to heal. And once you summon them, you have a small window of a few seconds that you can use to pump some heals out to your party. The healing that the Ancestors do is actually quite significant. I didn't have meters in that run, but I saw some logs after that. And after Chain Heal and Riptide, the Ancestor healing is actually competing with everything else for the third spot. And yes, tuning can change everything, but right now it feels really good to play with them. Not everything felt good though, you have a talent called Elemental Reverb, which adds a charge to Lava Burst and Riptide. That makes it so you now you have 3 Riptides and 3 Lava Bursts, and that actually feels a bit weird. Most of the time you're just sitting on those stacks and you're not utilizing them. Yes, there are situations where it's actually nice, if you're setting Primordial Wave having 3 Riptides is actually good. If a boss fight starts you can just spam Lava Burst at the beginning and do some single target damage. But overall those are more like a niche situations and they don't happen that often, so most of the time, as I said, you're just sitting on those stacks and you're not using them. So I thought, fine, we have this talent, let's go to the Shaman talent tree and remove the Echo of the Elements talent which gives you an extra Riptide and Lava Burst charge, so you have an extra talent point that you can spend there. Yeah, that's a good plan, but it actually doesn't work in dungeons, because if you do that, you have no way to get Earth and Harmony and Ascendance, which you definitely won't take. This could actually work in a raid where you actually take mana tide, but you have to spend extra talent point for the talent below that to get earth and harmony, so overall it's just a big hassle. Having 3 stacks is also not going to be beneficial in raid because there you keep that spell on cooldown, so you're not gonna be casting more riptides, and overall that note is just a wasted talent as it stands. Unfortunately, that means that this note either has to be reworked, or if there was a good way to drop the Echo of the Elements so you don't hurt your whole Shaman talent tree, then that could be a viable option, but this would require a rework of the whole entire talent Shaman tree, which, uh, yeah, it's probably not happening. Now, this next one is probably a bug, but boy does it feel good. The last Farseer talent note is called Ancestral Swiftness and as the text says, it's supposedly going to replace the Nature Swiftness. And then on top of making your next spell instacast, it also buffs it a little bit and it's going to summon another Ancestor. However, the way that it works right now is that it doesn't replace Nature Swiftness, you get both spells and they do not share cooldown. So you can use both separately, which feels really nice and even if they didn't summon Ancestor, Probably that's a bug that's getting fixed, but I figured I can mention it here because it feels really nice to have those two buttons, even if it's an extra keybind. And who knows, maybe this bug is going to lead to something good, maybe you can have just two charges of Nature Swiftness and have the same button and keybind, probably too much to ask for, but it is what it is. 
there was one more thing that didn't feel nice and that was actually summoning ancestors and just wasting them by doing no healing. In a dungeon that actually happens a lot because we use our nature swiftness to summon healing rain so we don't have to cast it, that summons an ancestor but then at this point there's nothing to heal you're just doing damage so the ancestor just expires without doing anything. You also have a hero talent called Routine Communication which gives Riptide a chance to proc an ancestor. I actually tried it out in a dungeon and the same thing happens, sometimes you press your Riptide, your ancestor procs but there is nothing to heal after that so it just expires. At least that hero talent is a node so you can actually pick the other talent which increases the duration of the ancestors by 2 seconds and that's probably gonna be the go to otherwise you have to deal with the RNG of randomly summoning an ancestor. Yet again if we ask for them to do a little bit of damage if you're casting damaging spells that's probably going too far and they're never going to agree on this. But then they should at least implement something of the sort if you summon ancestor and it never heals because you're casting damaging spells and it expires maybe you get like a small buff or something like this. So it doesn't feel like the ancestor was completely wasted. One more extremely fun interaction should be mentioned here, you have a hero talent called Primordial Capacity which not only increases your mana but it also allows Tidal Waves to stack up to 4 times. That actually happens quite easily especially when you have 3 rape tides available instead of 2. And this is actually huge for the tier set that we're going to have for season 1 in the War Within as Tidal Waves itself is going to be more effective and the spells that we cast under it are going to be more powerful. Not to mention the mana reduction cost. So this plays very strongly towards the Farseer hero talents. Although it's not all roses, the cast time of Chain Heal for example gets so low along with all the other talents that reduce it that I was actually managing to get my Chain Heals down to 0.4 seconds cast and then I just have to wait for my GCD to come off cooldown as well. But regardless having 4 stacks of Tidal Waves allows you to be a Chain Heal machine gun even more so than before. And again considering the 4 piece tier set bonus that might be the go to hero talents for season 1 as all these synergies might simply outperform the Totemic Restoration Shaman. Let's quickly mention few of the other talents that are actually quite nice to play with although they don't have such a huge impact. Maelstrom Supremacy further increases the effectiveness of your main healing spells and Earthen Communion adds charges and healing to Earth Shield, both of these are pretty nice to have. Spirit Walker's momentum is also quite nice as it increases the duration of your Spirit Walker's grace, you'll definitely be casting when you use that spell. And Final Calling gives Absorb Shields to nearby party members once the Ancestors expire and that basically happens all the time. All these nodes complement the spec quite nicely so basically they're all small wins. At the end let's briefly talk about Farseer Restoration Shaman rating as well, I think that's going to be even better. As first you're already using Unleashed Life in raids anyway so that's not going to be a problem to pick as in Mythic Plus Dungeons and then next you're already trying to maximize the use of that spell in the raid anyway, you're also not using your Nature Swiftness to do damage there and there are much less occasions where you don't do healing so wasting ancestors there should not be a problem at all. You'll be able to do insane amounts of healing with them, min maxing your tidal waves and combining your ancestors with a chain heal machine gun spamming. So overall I think that the Farseer Restoration Shaman is going to be supreme in raid environment. It's early days but so far I have been very pleasantly surprised by the Farseer hero talents as it feels nice to play with them even in dungeons and I'm looking forward to playing more with them hopefully with the minor issues that I mentioned getting fixed before the release. The main gameplay changer the surging totem is as cool as it sounds, it replaces healing rain, it's instant cast there's no aiming and there's no downtime. It will even relocate the healing rain for you if it needs to be relocated. Pressing that button feels like a huge win 
only until it actually works correctly. Quite often it would decide to put the healing rain somewhere and that somewhere happens to be exactly where you don't want it to be. Obviously that doesn't happen all the time but when it happens it feels really bad because you're doing no healing and no damage with your healing rains. I tried to adjust to this by standing in melee trying to force the healing rains to be on top of me, the tank and the mobs and that would work sometimes but not always and I can easily see a coordinated group having no problems with that because everybody will know where to stay and how to stack but this is going to be a nightmare in Pux no doubt about that with all played preservation evoker with a mage and a hunter in your group. If your pug is range heavy by default these people have no idea where to stand what's left for standing in melee so you can actually bait the surging totem on top of the mobs. I also had a lot of problems with tank moving the mobs and me dropping the totem way too early while he's still gathering the pool. In those situations the healing rains would just lag behind and always be not up to where they need to be. And it is early days, there's hope that probably the totem is going to become smarter and drop the healing rains at better locations in the future. But so far in the runs that I had I definitely did not have much fun trying to bait the healing rains and then getting angry because they drop in Narnia. As I said though once that happens it feels really really good and in my opinion I think it would be fine if they actually let us aim the totem, drop it into a certain location and then maybe even allow us to relocate it even if you don't have the totemic recall talent available. That would basically solve all the problems and it would actually make it feel more like a totem because right now it's a button that you press and you forget about it and it doesn't feel like the rest of the totems that you either have to aim or there's some kind of interaction with it where you pump heals into it and of course there are exceptions but I think you get the point. And lastly let me also mention that I don't think this is going to be much better in raid. If everybody is stacked yes then it's going to be amazing. But if there is a little bit of spreading, judging by how so far the totem makes its decisions, it's going to be hit and miss again and if you cannot min max it, you'll probably just lean to the other hero talent tree which is much more reliable. Other than the surging totem, there are a few other hero talents that actually complement the spec quite nicely. You get a free chain heals casted every time you summon a totem which definitely feels quite nice. The chain heals themselves jump additional times to heal for more and your cloud burst store even more healing than before making them even more powerful. All these talents are passive, they give you extra HPS just so this pack can actually be competitive with the farseer as the extra healing that you get from the healing rains of the surging totem are just not going to be enough. And while those hero talent nodes actually feel good, there are others that actually feel a little bit like a miss. There's a double selection node that is kinda dubious as the first option increases the radius of your totems and the health of them. That could probably be useful for earthen wall totem in raid but increasing the radius is actually not as good as you think it would be. If you're playing this in a dungeon there is no totem that radius is big enough to actually encompass both your hunter and your mage in a 5 man party and if you're in a raid everybody is stacked anyway so that shouldn't be an issue. The other option reduces the cooldown of some of your totems and that could be useful for let's say poison cleansing totem on afflicted week. But outside of that, that also feels kinda like a wasted node that you're definitely not gonna be using in raid and has limited usages in Mythic Plus. And it doesn't get better as we reach a node that is completely dead to Restoration Shaman. There's no choice here, it's just a node that says increases the duration of your earth living weapon effect by 6 seconds. Now I understand we share this tree with enhancement shamans who have a lot of weapon imbue value but that's just not true for Rastro Shaman. Right now I'm not even picking earth living weapon in raid, what's left for mythic plus where that's never been an option at all. This talent is basically forcing you to pick earth living weapon on the Rastro Shaman talent tree and that simply means that you're going to lose value elsewhere because you're going to have to free up a talent point for it. 
I thought there could be a small saving grace because of the last note that you have on the Hero Talent tree called Whirling Elements. This one gives you 3 buffs once you use your Surging Totem and one of them applies Earth Living Weapon to every target that you heal with your Chain Heal. In order for that to happen you don't need to have Earth Living Weapon talented and it actually works but the duration of that Earth Living buff is actually the original 18 seconds and it's not increased by those 6 seconds promised by the Imbuement Mastery. So long story short, you can actually play with 9 hero talents by just dropping the Imbuement Mastery altogether and it's not going to make a difference as the other option is to actually make changes to your Shaman talent tree which also doesn't feel nice, especially in Metic Plus. On top of buffing your chain heal, the whirling elements also buffs your next healing wave or healing surge and reduces the cast time of your next healing spell. And although that sounds cool, keep in mind that the tier set is going to buff your tidal waves and make them more effective, which means that your chain heals are going to be so fast that you have to wait for your GCD to come back off of cooldown so you can continue casting. That's not necessarily a good thing and another thing to mention is that the Farseer Shaman has a much better synergy with the tier set as it has a talent that allows the tidal waves to stack up to 4 times and all the things that the tier set does revolve around tidal waves. And having said that, that's just another reason to pick Farseer Shaman on top of Totemic. Last but not least, let's mention another interesting hero talent. This one comes in a note, you can either choose to make your Surging Totem more powerful or you can select a talent that allows you to imbue your shield for one hour, increasing your overall healing done and extending the duration of your healing stream and cloud burst totems. That sounds like a lot of fun because not only you're going to be doing more healing, but one of your most powerful spells, the totems, are going to be even bigger. That's going to allow us to do even more ridiculous cloud burst totems in raids, but it comes at a cost you are not allowed to use two handers anymore because this imbue goes only on shields. That of course should not be a big deal unless there are some overpowered staffs like we saw at the end of this expansion. So in conclusion I'm going to say that Totemic Shaman feels quite nice to play but it's all dependent on the placement of the healing reins. If that works correctly it's amazing, if it doesn't work it doesn't feel good at all. Right now it's a bit of a hit and miss so if that stays like that I would easily see how everybody's going to lean towards Farseer Shaman a little bit more but it's also still early days so we'll see how everything shapes up to be. Unlike other hero trees, in this one you gain a brand new skill called Celestial Conduit which doesn't replace existing skills. However, keep in mind that several monk skills have been removed from the game or made passive so you actually have much less buttons to press and adding a new button doesn't feel that bad. The skill itself is a short channel that does a ton of healing and a little bit of damage to everyone around you and it comes at the price of 90 seconds cooldown. I must say that pressing this button feels really really good even without talking about anything else that it brings to the table with the other hero talents. It is a little bit longer cooldown than anything else that we used to with Monk apart from Revival but it's so powerful that it actually fits the gameplay style quite nicely. Before we talk about the other hero talents that come along with it, we first have to mention some of the changes that the monk class got as a whole in its healing tree. The first thing to mention is that Essence Font is gone, completely. It's not a talent, it's not a base skill, it's out of the game. So from that perspective actually having an extra button now basically replaces that spell from before. Teachings of the Monastery is now base and some of the skills that we had before are made passive. The most noticeable change is that refreshing Jade Wind is now passively summoned once you press your Thunder Focus T. That's actually relevant to some of the hero talents that we're going to mention next and the other changes include the Chi Wave and Zen Pools being passive. 
I tried both of them and honestly both of them are really really disappointing. Zenpus doesn't do damage anymore, it's only healing but the healing that it does is very negligible unless you play around it but there's no point really to do that. And while two waves triggering automatically every 15 seconds sounds cool, at the end of the day it didn't do almost any damage and any healing so probably Chi Burst is going to be the pick here. All of this is going to shuffle a little bit the talent points in the Mist River tree, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And having said that, now let's look into the rest of the hero talents. Some of the hero talents are actually quite boring, for example, increasing the duration of your refreshing Jade Wind, but there are four that are actually pretty cool. All of them call one of the four Celestials to come and help you in some way. For example, Tiger Poem and Vivify have a chance to call Zwen to come help you and do some physical damage to your enemies and heal your allies for a little bit. This is actually quite a nice addition to your damage, it ended up doing about 5-6% of my total damage in the runs that I've done, although converting that into healing wasn't that impressive. However, if you consider that every time that happens then Nizao shows up and reduces the cast time of your next enveloping mist, that also gives a shield to everybody in your party. These shields actually ended up doing quite some work and when you add the healing from Zwen as well, they both contributed to the total of about 5-6% overall healing as well, which is quite nice. And while we need single target spells to trigger Zwen and Nizao, that's not the case for Chiji. He comes when you press your spinning crane kick or the refreshing jade wind which is basically the thunder focus T and again brings a little bit of extra healing in those AoE situations. And last but not least we have the good old Elon who comes when you cast the Shaylon's gift and he reduces your cooldown time of some of your spells for 8 seconds by 75% and this list of spells includes life cocoon and thunder focus T which means that you can get them back sooner. Now you've probably noticed that all four Celestials are passively connected to the buttons that you're pressing all of the time. That brings quite a nice bonus to both your damage and healing and although you have no direct control of when it's going to happen, at least in most cases, they are there all the time and they're passively making you more powerful. This does not change your playstyle, you're getting more powerful passively all the time and you get a new big cooldown button that you can press in dire situations. Now I'll have a separate video talking about the Master of Harmony but comparing the two hero talent specs, Conduit of the Celestials definitely feels better as the other hero talent spec also gives you some passive bonuses, healing and damage but first they don't feel that powerful and second you don't have this big cooldown button that you can press in those extra dire situations. And that's not all because we haven't talked about the capstone talent yet. It's called Unity Within and it allows you to reactivate Celestial Conduits once you start channeling, which on its turn is going to call all four Celestials and they're going to perform their special move, whether if it's shields, healing or reducing your cooldowns. This one is actually quite powerful and I would just let my Celestial Conduits finish channeling and then it would cast automatically at the end. However, double pressing it at the start is going to give you some burst of healing in the beginning of the channel which could be crucial because as you can see from the footage in this situation my warrior was quite low when I started channeling and they died although the healing went out but if I double press my button they would probably live. So overall this is pretty nice addition to the whole spec and it makes everything click and feel even better. Unfortunately not everything is perfect, there are a few questionable notes, for example this one. It's a choice that either lets you extend the duration of the refreshing Jade Wind or gain one once you summon Chiji or Yuan. The problem is, this is a skill that you don't really want to use in M+, because it's a melee skill and usually you don't have a stacked melee group in dungeons. And before we talk about raiding, your defensive node choices are also not that great compared to some of the other hero talents. You can either get damage reduction while you're channeling your celestial conduit which is questionable because do you even need damage reduction during that? It's very powerful already. 
or you can further buff your fortifying brew, but that's also a very strong defensive already, so getting an absorb shield on top of it, yes, it's nice, but is it really that helpful is the question. And by the way, we didn't mention this, but you don't have damp and harm already, it's only fortifying brew, this is basically your main defensive now. And at the end, all things considered, this seems to be great in Mythic Plus, but it's questionable how it's going to perform in raids. Your Celestial Conduit only heals 5 targets, no matter what you do with it, and although you'll be getting all the other benefits from the other Celestials all the time, even possibly refreshing Jade Wind from that node that I showed you, somehow that doesn't feel enough and it doesn't convince me that you'll be able to pump in a raid environment. I might be wrong though as I haven't tested this, but also keep in mind that the other hero talents, Master of Harmony, kinda seem to be leaning more towards the raid. So it's quite possible that in the monk's case we see a clear separation, Conduit of the Celestials is going to be pretty strong in Mythic Plus and Master of Harmony is probably going to be much better in raid. The main idea behind those hero talents is that you generate a resource called vitality by doing damage and healing and then when you press your thunder focus T you release that vitality to do more healing in the next 10 seconds. On paper that doesn't sound bad at all and even more so considering that you get a hero talent that gives you an extra charge for thunder focus T. And there are more even hero talents that increase the rate at you generate that vitality by either doing more damage or more healing. The second charge of the Thunder Focus T is even more welcome considering that the monk lost some of the base abilities like Essence Font. Check my video of the gameplay of the Master of the Conduit's talents where I talk about this in more detail. And overall, all of this should feel pretty nice playing it in dungeons, but somehow it just doesn't. Maybe it's just because of the scaling. And unfortunately, at the end of the day, the Master of the Harmony didn't do that much healing and that much damage looking at the meters at the end of the run. Of course, it could have been just me not doing enough damage and healing to generate enough vitality so I can get more benefits after that from it. Maybe the key level was too low, but comparing this to the Conduit of the Celestial's Hero Talents build, this one just didn't feel as powerful. Now let me mention some of the other talents that we have available in the tree because they don't sound that bad at all once you go through them. For example, you can get Harmonic Gambit which allows your melee abilities to do extra damage drawing vitality once you pop your Thunder Focus T. And I was expecting to see some impressive numbers at the end of the run, but somehow they were not that high. Maybe most of the vitality was just going towards healing spells. Or maybe I was just not pressing enough the single target abilities in the different situations so I can generate more value out of this. But since this talent doesn't have an AoE component, like the numbers were not what you would expect at the end of the run. You have a talent that increases the damage of Chi Burst and Chi Wave and since Chi Wave is now passively activated every 15 seconds I decided to give it a try and unfortunately it's still just bad. Without this talent, the numbers that you wave generated are quite low. With it, well, they're still quite low. They're just a little bit less bad. Then you see even more talents that are damage connected. For example, your single target melee abilities are going to do a little bit of AoE damage in a cone in front of you. And ro rotating between them and nature healing spells is going to buff them with a stacking value. The capstone talent also has a healing and damaging component, both by increasing the healing and damage that you do to targets affected by your aspect of harmony. And frankly, all of the stacks, and it feels pretty good at the end of the run when you look into the meters and you see that you actually manage to do a little bit more damage than usual. However, we should also note that healer damage seems to be very insignificant and judging by the how things are going, it's probably going to be the same, healer damage is not going to matter, it's all going to be about survivability during the first season in the war within. And at the same time, the healing profile that you get from the aspect of the harmony doesn't seem to be that powerful in Mythic Plus Dungeons because the healing that you get from it is in the form of a hot effect. Now, don't get me wrong, it's good, it heals, but when you compare it to the Conduit of the Celestials, it just doesn't feel superior at all. Quite the opposite, pressing Thunder Focus T to get some extra healing, I just couldn't feel it. And that's a very resonating difference with the Conduit of the Celestials. 
Having said all of this though, this should feel pretty damn nice in raid. You generate more vitality from healing than from damage and all you do in raid is supposedly heal. So your thunder focus T stacks will become very powerful small cooldowns that you can use in that environment. The talents that were related to damage and you saw earlier all of them were kinda leaning towards single target damage as well. So based on that the most logical conclusion is that master of harmony is going to shine in raids. It is still viable and playable in mythic plus but it begs the question why would you try that if you can play conduit of the celestials there which feels much more powerful in dungeon environments. Also potential tuning and changes could be a big factor of how this is going to turn out to be before the release of the war within. We need to start by mentioning that the druid gets some major changes in its gameplay in the war within just by the changes made in the class and in the spec trees both. For example adaptive swarm is gone, moonkin form is gone completely. Flourish now shares a note with photosynthesis and there are some new talents as well. For example you get fluid form which automatically shifts you into a cat form every time you cast shred or rake which I must say feels pretty damn nice. Even more so shape shifting now grants you heart of the wild for 10 seconds every one minute. And then all the damage that you do during heart of the wild is actually converted to healing through dream of scenarios talent. So even without hero talents all of this feels pretty great and it's going to substantially change the way you use your spec while at the same time those new talents actually connect with the hero talents in a very nice way so let's look into that next. If you play a restoration druid and you like going into cat form, doing some damage, leaving bleeds on your targets then wild stalker druid is gonna be your thing. Your main talent is called thriving growth, every time you use rip or rake there is a chance that you put an extra bleed on your target and at the same time wild growth, regrowth and efflorescence have a chance to put an extra hot on your target. And honestly that's pretty much it for wild stalker restoration druid. Of course there's a bunch of other talents for example some of them increase the rip and the ferocious by damage or the damage of the moon and the sunfire. Once those extra bleeds or halts on your targets expire they basically burst for extra damage or extra healing around them and you get flat increase to both your damage and healing in general and on targets that already have those extra halts or bleeds on them. You can see the capstone talent on the bottom right over there. Now all of this might sound a little bit boring to you but you are actually a cat form weaving druid on steroids. You're doing more damage and more healing in general, you get the extra bleeds and halts that contribute to a very good amount in damage meters at the end of the run and when you combine this with everything that we said so far, fluid form that lets you go to cat form automatically and then healing while you have heart of the wild active by just doing damage, this kinda makes the spec feel a little bit overpowered. Not to mention that the free heart of the wild that you get every one minute actually overlaps with Convoke of the Spirits. Yes this is still going to feel bad if you're playing in a pug and they're so bad that you have no time to go into a cat form and you just have to spam heals to them hoping they're gonna survive, that's not gonna change. But once you have a semi decent group this hero talent spec feels amazing. So in short if you're a restoration druid who enjoys cat weaving you're gonna have pretty nice time in War Within. Restoration Druid Keeper of the Groove though is a completely different animal. Every time you summon your Groove Guardians they buff your next targeted heal to spawn some Dream Petals that do AoE healing around them. That's actually pretty cool because you have full control of when and how this is going to happen but that of course is not all. Some of the talents further increase the overall healing that your Groove Guardians do and they also apply a minor scenario ward on your targets that does extra healing once they take damage. The capstone talent is a little bit boring but you get extra healing based on the amount of Groove Guardians that you have summoned at any point 
And the most natural question at this point is, what about damage, since the auto hero talent spec actually had a lot to do with damage? Oh, don't worry, I got you. But this is probably not what you would expect. Keeper of the Groove actually wants to keep you in caster form by increasing the damage of your Rat and Starfire, and there's another talent that buffs them and makes them insta-cast if you keep spamming regrowths, or if you keep spamming star surges, you get an insta-cast regrowth. And there's yet another twist, your Groove Guardians are now gonna be casting Moonfire. So boom, guess which spell is going to be on the top of your damage meters at the end of the run. Now, all of this actually feels pretty nice to play with, you're basically staying in caster form, you're casting your heals, you're casting your damaging spells, some of them get buffed and they're insta-cast, and supposedly that's a very different playstyle than the cat weaving which comes with the wild stalker hero darn build. However, my main concern here is that the damage from the rake is actually so valuable and so high that even if you're playing this build, you're still probably going to go into cat form and put some bleeds on targets, which is going to maximize your DPS. That is probably going to go against the main idea of this hero talent spec, which supposedly is only going to keep you in caster form and you're not going to have to go to cat weave and do some damage there. And only tuning will tell, but I'm afraid that this is going to make this spec very complicated because on top of everything else, you have to still go into cat form and put some bleeds. Regardless, I enjoy playing this a lot in M+, and I hope that they manage to make it so you can stay in cast form all the time, you never have to worry about cat form. And I think it's worth mentioning, this is gonna be the spec that you wanna be playing in bugs, as it's much better with dealing with unpredictable damage. So, as promised, let's compare the two now, and I think we're gonna see the trend that we saw with the other hero talent specs. As the gameplay of both feels pretty nice, but it kinda seems it's designated to be played in a certain environment. Wildstalker is definitely going to do amazing in M+, with all the additional healing and damage that you can do while staying in cat form. Especially considering the new addition that Blizzard added, the ability to be able to heal through dealing damage while being shapeshifted. That simply screams Mythic Plus to me, and yes, it depends on scaling, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is one of the dominant specs next season in that environment. When it comes to raiding though, I'm not so sure. Let's face it, you won't be spending your time in cat form in the raid, you'll be casting so you'll be losing a lot of value from all the talents that buff your cat form damage and healing, and it's very doubtful that the extra hots that you're getting are gonna be enough to compensate for that. However, this is probably where Keeper of the Groove is going to shine. You're supposedly full time caster form in that spec, your trends are overpowered, they're also buffing your other healing spells so you should be able to produce some very significant numbers in that environment. I personally think, and I should say, I personally hope that Keeper of the Groove is going to be viable spec in Mythic Plus as well, as the playstyle is actually quite nice and quite different. There are two main concerns here, first, is it gonna be overshadowed by Wildstalker in M+, cause it definitely seems it's going to be. And second, can they make the tuning so you don't have to go into cat form to do extra bleed damage? This is definitely going to make the spec way over complicated. At the end of the day though, both of them feel pretty damn nice and I had a lot of fun playing them on the beta, so I'm looking forward to see how this is going to shape out in the first season of The War Within. We're starting with the Chrono Warden, and to be honest, I wasn't sure what to expect from this one, but I was very, very pleasantly surprised. Your Living Flames are accumulating 50% of the damage and healing you've done to that target in the last 5 seconds, which makes them even more powerful. And your Capstone Talent is one of the tier set bonuses that we've seen so far already. Every time you cast Empowered Spell, you send out 3 extra Chrono Flames to your targets, which will do extra damage and healing. Those are also the empowered version of the Living Flame, and they're very, very powerful, exactly as you would expect them to be. Just because of them, in the damage meters at the end of the run, Living Flame was basically top for my damage and healing bolt, as I was sending those empowered versions every time I pressed Empowered Spell. 
of course, that's not everything that you get, there's actually so much more. For example, every time you press tip the scales, you get a buff that reduces the cooldown recovery rate of your spells, it gives you haste and speed, and there's another talent which gives you cooldown reduction for the empower spell that you just casted up to 6 seconds. Now the exact number of that seems to be random, but nevertheless you get the cooldown reduction every time you use one of those spells, which is simply great, as it synergizes very well with your capstone talent. Even more so, when you get the tip the scales buff, you're actually empowering a nearby ally to gain a buff that gives them a chance to replicate some of the damage and healing that they're already doing. Now this smells like augmentation evoker a lot, and we don't know what the chance to proc this is going to be. But it's a welcome buff that you give out passively and if you're in a coordinated group and you align this with your big cooldowns you can actually get a lot of value out of this, specifically I guess in mythic plus environment. Back to healing, another effect that we've seen already, spirit bloom leaves a halt on your targets and this time you're getting a haste buff for the duration of this halt which makes this spell actually very powerful because remember you can get a cooldown reduction for up to 6 seconds when you cast it and every time you cast it you're sending out those extra living flames. All of that complements the playstyle of the preservation evoker in a very nice way and I became a huge fan of this hero talent spec quite quickly. There are some little bit less useful talents, for example your dream and fire breaths can actually extend their duration based on your critical strikes. That's not groundbreaking, but it's quite welcome, and if you cast Echo, there's a small chance that your next Echo is going to be much more effective. Those are talents that we definitely don't mind and can definitely stay there, and there's one more interesting twist. Your hover is replaced with something that's supposed to be a blink, but I've played mage and the mage's blink is actually instant. This one doesn't have a cast time, but it has some kind of a weird animation that happens before you actually blink, which feels a little bit weird. But I guess if we play a little bit with it, we're gonna get used to it and it's not gonna feel that awkward. The talents that come along with it are also kinda useless, for example if you blink you leave modes behind and if your allies walk on top of them they get a small speed buff which lasts 30 seconds but it's not that big. So it's not all perfect but overall as I said before this hero talent spec feels really really nice. It's preservation evoker doing a lot of damage, a lot of healing but it's even better than before. Next up we have Flame Shaper and I had very high expectations about this one. It adds new skill to your toolkit, it's called Engulf. It's a 30 second instant cast cooldown which you can use to do either big single target damage or healing. The healing part is definitely interesting because it is increased for each periodic healing effect that you have on the target. In that case, if you have both Dream Breath and Reversion on the target, it's going to heal for 100% more, which is a lot. The other cool thing that you can do with Engulf is, it works with Echo. So that opens even more possibilities for you when it comes to healing. But at the end of the day, I kinda had mixed feelings about this one. First, when do you use it for healing, when do you use it for damage? And then, if you do decide to use it for healing, there is some setup that you need to do there are quite a few interactions that you need to be aware of, so all this kinda made the class even more complicated than it already is, which is not what hero talents are supposedly made for. Now, don't get me wrong, Engulf is amazing, it does a lot of damage, it does a lot of healing, you can store it into your stasis, you can combine it with your temporal anomaly, and simply put, it pumps even without the other talents that I'm going to show you next. A little bit of practice is going to go a long way for the order of the buttons that you need to be pressing and the combos that you could be using. And number wise comparing the two hero talent specs at the end of the dungeon, they seem to be doing the same amount, both for healing and damage, but you have to do a lot of extra work with the engulf and it kinda comes much more easier with the Crown Warden. Regardless of that, keep in mind that you will be working with two charges of Engulf as you get a free talent that gives you an extra charge. The spell has huge interaction with your breath spells as it extends their duration on your target by 8 seconds as long as of course they're active on it. And the capstone talent in the middle there consumes 4 seconds of your dream breath on the target to do AoE healing around them. 
all of that of course is pretty cool especially if you use it for healing and you get a talent that flat increases the damage of your fire breath and the healing of your dream breath. You're also getting something called Enkinda which buffs your essence burst spells. This one is a bit weird because you either need to be casting emerald blossoms to get the healing effect or single target disintegrates to get the damage component out of it. Which is very niche and situational and of course using this on echo is not going to give you much benefit. So although this sounds good on paper, at the end of the day it didn't do that much at the end of the dungeon, neither for healing nor for damage. Check this one though, renewing blaze can also apply to your target or nearby ally. This is actually very powerful because we all know how good renewing blaze is, especially in certain situations. You can basically neglect the damage of a mechanic using that and now you can apply it to somebody else as well and that somebody else could as well be your tank. So I really hope they don't change this one because it's simply amazing. Some of the other talents give you increased critical strike chance against targets below 50% health and the critical strikes themselves from Living Flame and Azure Strike have a bigger chance to give you Essence Burst. These talents of course are quite not disruptive to your gameplay and are quite welcome and you also get to hover a little bit further which is another weird one kinda like the blink and maybe I'm biased because the role of the monk is quite low range just enough to get you out of a mechanic or out of the way of a frontal and I definitely don't want to end up at the other end of the map once I press hover but this one I guess is also going to take a little bit of getting used to. Alright and of course the question comes which one is better and which one you should play. First when it comes to numbers I think they're both competitive and the difference between the two is not going to be that big at least at this point and with this tuning in the beta. When it comes to rating I haven't had a chance to test there yet but I can see benefits for both specs being viable there. So I don't think we can declare a winner neither for mythic plus nor for rating at this point. However, I must say that my personal preference so far is the Chrono Warden as it feels much smoother to play. I was kind of vibing playing with it while the engulf did feel a little bit like a struggle but I can't say it's worse, in fact quite the opposite and probably with just a little bit of practice this spec is also going to start to flow and it would feel just as good if not better than the Chrono Warden. The first thing to mention here is that some talents are completely gone starting with Glimmer of Light. Now I must say I don't miss that at all, playing without it actually felt pretty damn good. Now that also means that all other talents related to Glimmer of Light are gone including Daybreak. And although it was a good button that's basically one less button to press and one thing less to carry and worry about. At the same time we're getting some new goodies and talents on the places of the old ones. For example your word of glory and light of dawn now have increased critical strike chance based on your targets missing health. Your judgment now heals you and if you overheal that's transferred to allies nearby and the damage reduction effect that was bind to the glimmer of light is now embedded into your beacon of light. So those changes alone make the class feel much better already but then we get the hero talents. The main idea behind Lightsmith is that you get a new skill and don't worry about the tooltip here I'm gonna summarize it for you. The first time you cast the skill you throw a shield to an ally which absorbs 50% of your maximum health instantly and then 2% every 2 seconds for 20 seconds more which is 10 additional percent. The second time you press the skill you throw a weapon to an ally which starts to deal extra damage or healing based on the abilities that they're casting and the value is increased if they're hitting just a single target. The best part is those abilities are duplicated on yourself when you cast them on an ally so you basically get double the value. The abilities themselves are overpowered, the shield makes you even tankier than before and you get to save an ally which could as well be your tank. And at the same time the weapons contribute a good amount to your overall healing anything between 5 and 10% while the damage… well the damage is broken right now on the beta. 
for some reason it's doing insane amounts of damage, you're out DPSing tanks and even DPS sometimes easily, and that's obviously going to get fixed. But damage aside, the healing from the weapons is passive and it's not a smooth cooldown that you can feel once you press it, it's more of an overall contribution, pretty much like Tears Deliverance, which is there for you throughout the dungeon and the uptime is actually quite good because on top of you casting the skills, you can actually get free procs every now and then by just using spells and abilities, which could be the shield, could be the weapon, but then you're guaranteed to get a weapon once you proc your wings throughout the capstone talent, which not only gives the weapon to your target, but it also echoes the holy power abilities that you're casting to them. It's also worth mentioning that you have two charges, and while you want to cast the weapon on cooldown, you can stagger casting the shield a little bit, because when it's up, the second charge is recharging, and you can stall a little bit the defensive cast. Of course, there's more to the hero talents, a pretty interesting one makes your consecration do instant healing and damage based on the holy power abilities that you spent before, and this one is stacking. Now, my first thought was, can I stack this to the infinity? Well, the tooltip doesn't say it, but it's limited to 5 stacks maximum. Still, that's a quite fun one, it didn't do a lot of healing, it was like 2.5% uh, of my overall, but it did significant amount of damage. So I think that's a pretty nice addition to our toolkit. Another interesting one, your critical strikes with judgment spread a little bit of healing around your target, and the amount here is actually not that big, but considering the other talent that I showed you earlier, judgment healing yourself and spreading the overhealing around you, that's basically a small synergy that it's quite welcome. You also get a talent that gives you free infusion of light every time armament fades away from you, and that's actually quite good because every time you consume infusion of light, the cooldown of your armament is decreased by 3 seconds. Now, consuming infusions of light is a bit weird because you get these overpowered holy lights which hit very hard, but you have to just stop and cast them which just feels weird with the playstyle that holy powder has right now. But having those two extra talents as a lightsmith paladin makes this feel a little bit better. There's also a choice note with two different weapon imbues. The first one gives you armor and primary stat, while the second one gives you increased stamina and chance to burst a little bit of healing around you. That's an interesting choice because the first one gives you damage mitigation and primary stat, which is both healing and damage, but the second one increases your stamina and the shields that you throw out are based on your stamina, on your maximum health, so picking either of those has some merit behind it. Now, obviously, it's not all good. There is this very weird talent, for example, which just increases your active or effect by 33%, only on targets with your armaments on them. But all things considered, that's a very small fraction, so it's kind of like a useless talent. And then we have completely useless choice node, and as some of you pointed out in the comments below, this is probably good and viable in PvP, but picking any of these two talents in either Raid or Mythic Plus feels like a complete waste. Despite all of this though, my biggest criticism to the Holy Armaments build is actually Blessing of Summer. And yes, that's a choice note, it's not something that you need to pick, but it's optimal to choose that on top of the Merciful Auras in Mythic Plus specifically. And once you do that, it becomes a nightmare because the Holy Armaments is 2 spells that you need to track, Blessing of Summer is 4 other spells that you need to track, which one is next, who you're casting it on, do you need to stagger it a little bit so it aligns with cooldowns, it just becomes way too much. I'm definitely not a fan of such a type of a playstyle and spells, so I even ended up picking up Merciful Auras in Mythic Plus, although I know it's suboptimal, but there's things to be considered here. Either Blessing of Summer could be completely removed, I don't think anyone's gonna feel sorry about this, or at least in the Lightsmith Talon build, the Holy Armaments could actually replace Blessing of Summer, so you're actually stuck with only one button that you need to press and alternate between skills. I think something like that is going to make miracles with the playstyle of Lightsmith Paladin and make it much more smoother and easy to flow. 
And last but not least, we should mention this in raiding environment. I haven't tested it there, but I just don't see how it's going to compete with the other hero talent build, Herald of the Sun. Throwing the shields on your tanks every now and then is going to feel pretty good and it's going to help a lot, but outside of that, the healing from the sacred weapons doesn't seem to be where it needs to be to be competitive in raid, and even if the damage is fixed, nobody cares about damage in the raid environment anyway. The rest of your hero talents also do not contribute that much to your HPS, the extra damage for consecration is nice, but the healing is definitely not where it needs to be for raid. So I think this could be quite viable in Mythic Plus. Of course, it all depends on the tuning of the damage of the sacred weapons, but in raid, you're probably going to lean to the Herald of the Sun. So my final verdict is that this is definitely fun to play in dungeons and it's probably going to be the a little bit safer approach to pick there instead of the other hero talents. But I'm also expecting a lot more changes to happen on top of the tuning, which is obviously needed. So we probably will need to revisit that on the beta when we have more concrete numbers. The main node for the Herald of the Sun Paladin has been renamed to Dawnlight. You cast Holy Prism and then your next two Holy Spenders are empowered to leave either a Dot or a Hot on your target, depending if it's an enemy or an ally, which also radiates part of its value to nearby allies or enemies. Your main Holy Spender, Word of Glory, is also replaced by Eternal Flame, which leaves another hot on your targets, and it's more effective if it's cast on yourself. And then you get your Capstone talent, which is called Sun's Avatar. Once you pop your wings, you spread dawn lights around you, you get connected to them through beams, and everybody passing through those beams is either healed or damaged. Now, of course, this looks really cool, no doubt about that, and it also makes you think a little bit about your positioning once you pop your wings to maximize those beams' value. It also feels pretty nice to play with, the extra hots, the empowered words of glories, the extra power when you pop your wings, all of that is amazing, and maybe I had a little bit higher expectations, but I was expecting this to be even more powerful than it already is. Now keep in mind that I just played this when a set of nerfs settled in, and there's probably a lot more tuning to come in, so I would assume this is probably going to feel a little bit different once it comes close to the release date, but it's definitely pretty good right now as well, and it feels miles better than the Holy Paladin on retail, so it's definitely a huge step in the right direction of bringing Holy Paladin back. Now, of course, there's more coming with the talent tree, and the first thing to mention here is that Holy Shock and Holy Spenders actually feel good now. They are empowered by your tier set, but you're also getting a few talents that help on top of that. First, while you have Dawn Lights active, your Holy Spenders deal additional 10% damage and healing, and while they're active, you also get increased haste, which is stacking. On top of that, you get a whole bunch of talents that increase the critical strike of your Holy Shock and Light of Dawn, they leave a hot on your target if they critical strike, and there's also a small chance for them to recast at reduced effectiveness. All of that makes pressing these buttons fun and satisfying yet again, which was not the case in retail. And there's even another talent which 2 times per minute is going to empower your Holy Shocks to do 200% increased effectiveness which feels really good and it's definitely now moving the health bars back as it should have been before all the nerfs. You even get a talent which increases your synergy with Holy Prism, which activates the Dawn Lights at first place. You're also getting a free Divine Purpose after you use that button, which simply buffs your next Holy Power Spender and it makes it free. That synergizes even better with another talent that you get on the regular Paladin tree. Holy Prism buffs your next Holy or Flashlight which you can then combine with the infusions of light to cast this monstrous holy light, which is like a small lay on hands. Now, I've talked about the infusions of light in the Lightsmiths video as well. It's kind of weird to stop milling and then start casting, but those holy lights are so powerful that it's kind of also feeling bad to waste them. So, at the end of the day, I think that's just something that we have to get used to a little bit more, and it could be quite beneficial if you get stuck out of range and you have to heal from distance. 
Every video so far I've made in this series has a section where we talk about the bad nodes, the bad talents, the things that need to be improved, but surprisingly, Herald of the Sun actually looks pretty solid. Yes, it has this choice node which is completely useless in Raid and Metic Plus, this time at least it gives uh, increased movement speed, which you can argue is better than some of the other classes. And it also lacks a pure defensive node, apart from Eternal Flame healing you for 25% increased effectiveness. However, when you consider how tanky the Paladin is, the amount of utility you have to save yourself, including immunity, I don't think the lack of defensive node is going to be that problematic for this hero talent spec. So, in conclusion, at the end of the day, apart from the PvP node that's always there for all the classes, everything else seems to be top notch. If we're to compare the two hero talent specs, Herald of the Sun definitely seems like the spec that's going to have more throughput when it comes to healing, as you get more value from the dawn lights, from the internal flame, and when you pop your wings from the beams that connect you to the dawn lights, the holes that you live when you crit. So unless something goes terribly wrong with the tuning, I think Herald of the Sun is going to outperform Lightsmith when it comes to healing. The benefits of the Lightsmith, of course, is that you have this huge defensive there that you can cast on somebody else as well, which is not bad at all, and it could actually be viable playstyle in some hierarchies as well. I had a lot of fun playing both specs, nevertheless. When it comes to damage, we can't really compare them because Lightsmith right now is broken and it does insane amounts of damage, but that is definitely getting fixed. And even outside of this context, Herald of the Sun gives you the choice how to use your abilities, whether you want to use them for healing and damage. While the passiveness of the Lightsmith weapons is something that you don't have that much control over, but only tuning will tell which one is going to prevail in that department. When it comes to raiding though, I think Herald of the Sun is going to be the pure winner there. Not only because of the throughput that we already mentioned, but as you saw, it actually has a lot of talents that are trying to buff Light of Dawn as well. Now, I haven't tested in raid yet. I casted Light of Dawn in M+, just a few times to see how much it does. Uh, it doesn't do a lot, actually. Even with all the talents buffing it, but I can definitely see this being a viable spec, especially since we consider there might be more tuning coming up in the weeks to come. As a Void Weaver, you open a rift for 8 seconds that does AoE damage every time you cast Mind Blast. Now, the first thing you're going to notice, this thing looks amazing. I wish all the hero talents had such a cool graphics that tie back to your class's fantasies in such a nice way, and Void Weaver this priest is definitely a winner here. Now, it not only it looks good, but it actually does a lot of damage. It was easily my top damage contributor in the damage meters at the end of the run, and there was no other way really because your capstone talent further increases the damage of the rift every time you cast penance. There's another cool graphic here, which makes the rift bigger with each bolt that penance shoots out, and once the rift is over, it collapses and it does even more AoE damage. So, it looks good, it feels good, it plays good, and yes, it's an extra skill, but it's tied to some of the buttons that you're pressing already, so it's a huge win overall, and of course, that's not all. Kind of going in the same direction with the design, once you cast the rift, your smite is replaced by Void Blast. This simply does more damage and also has a different cooler graphic which also complements everything we've said so far, but there's also talents that complement the Void Blast itself. First, it increases the duration of the Entrophic Rift up to 3 seconds the more you cast it, and then your Atonement healing from the Void Blast is further increased, so not only does more damage, but it's going to do much more healing as well. So every 20 seconds or so, you're getting your Mind Blast cooldown back, which not only is going to do a lot of damage, but you get the Rift, which is a short window, which helps a lot with your healing as well. This feels really good, and it's especially helpful in the short windows where you don't have your Mind Bender available. If you have the Mind Blast, that can actually get you through those spots where you need to heal until your Mind Bender is back. Now, unfortunately, the rest of the hero talents are not that amazing, 
but everything we've talked about so far is just that good that it kinda almost compensates for the talents that I'm going to show you next. Some of the other notes are actually not that bad, for example there is a talent that increases the absorb amount of your power word shield. It's a small bonus that is quite welcome and it also synergizes quite well with the new tier set so nothing to complain about here. There is another note that makes your atonement a little bit more effective while the entrophic rift is active and that's also quite welcome as it makes you even more powerful in those small windows when you have the rift up. And yet another note transforms your mindbender into a void rate which does extra damage and attacks from distance which is another quite welcome bonus as this thing actually did quite a lot of damage at the end of the run. So these three notes are nice buffs that you get on the side but there's three more notes remaining and unfortunately there's nothing good to be said about them. All hero talents have some nodes that feel like wasted space but somehow for Voidweaver it seems that that count is a little bit higher. Starting with the defensive node you have two choices but both of them seem kinda weak. You can either siphon a little bit of health from nearby ally, yes ally, and only if their health is higher than you or you can take 3% less magic damage and that's only magic damage and if the damage happens to be shadow then you get a small heal. Both of these feel quite bad and considering that the priest doesn't have the best defensives in the game they could have definitely done something better here. After all the testing and the feedback continue so I have some hopes that they could do something and change this to be much better. Then you get to the choice pvp node that every class has, two useless talents that either give you a little bit of speed or slow the enemies down. Overall you could get some little value in some new situations but if that node was not there at all you wouldn't feel sorry. And then there's yet another talent which makes absolutely no sense and keep in mind that this is not a choice node you have to get this all the time. Shadow Word Dead does extra damage to shields and gives you mana back only if there was a shield present. I don't know maybe that's another pvp thing as I haven't seen much shields in pve. But even if that's the case that's one too many nodes for pvp. No offense to anyone playing in this mode but they could have definitely come up with something better. I had a blast playing Void Reaver. it seems like this is exactly what Disc Priest needs, the same playstyle as in Dragonflight but just better. The Entrophic Rift and the Void Blast both feel good to play but they also look amazing. And they're definitely going to blast in Mythic Plus and Dungeons. I didn't get to test this in raid but I think it should be relatively viable there as well. You can pre-ramp before you cast your mind blast and then you can take advantage of the talents that come along with the rift, the increased healing, the void blast etc. And since you can do this every 20 seconds or so that should be quite a nice playstyle to have in the raid environment. Is it going to be your weapon of choice though? Oh I do not plan to make a separate video for the oracle discipline priest so let's talk about it right now. I've played the oracle hero talent build as well and uh, for there you get something called premonition. That's a spell that changes every time you cast it and you cycle between three different effects. The effects themselves are actually quite good, they reduce your cooldowns, they increase your healing, they give absorb shoots to your allies, they give you instant radiance as casts and without going to the rest of the hero talents it's actually pretty damn good. However I'm not a big fan of those blessing of summer type of spells that change every time you cast them as it's quite complicated to min max your usage of them especially in the case of premonition as you have two charges and you can stagger one of them while the other is recharging. As I said they're not bad at all but it kinda overcomplicates the class as you have to keep track of them and then make decisions how and when to use them. And to that I can simply say why not play void weaver instead. It's so much more fun and for someone like me who never mained the priest it was always an old for me it's definitely the way to go. Now having said that if you actually deep dive into the oracle priest a little bit more if you play with it and you get a lot of practice you can probably min max the premonition uses to such a degree that you're going to outperform the void weaver easily. 
And I'm pretty sure that this is exactly what a lot of main discipline priests are going to do, especially in raid. But I'm personally going to stick to Voidweaver for as long as I can, and in order to switch into Oracle, it needs to be outperforming Voidweaver by a huge margin. So in short, if you want to have a lot of fun, Voidweaver is definitely the way to go, but if you want to min-max your performance, maybe you want to delve deeper into Oracle. The choice for me is clear, but let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what is your preference. The main source of playing Archon Holy Priest revolves around you casting your Halo spell, which is then recasted two more times in the next 10 seconds. This is made even better by your capstone talent, which makes the Halo converge back onto you, hitting everyone for a second time on its way back, including both allies and foes. This of course looks amazing since you get this pulsating Halo coming out and going back to you, but it's also quite powerful. Halo was my main source of damage at the end of the run, and it was one of the top 3 spells in my healing breakdown. And although people consider this to be a glorified hot effect, it actually does a lot of work. Especially when you consider some of the other talents that come along with it. First and foremost, you get a stacking buff increasing your healing on everybody that gets hit by the Halo, which lingers for 8 seconds after the last hit. Now this sounds more like a raid buff, but it's actually pretty good in dungeons as well, because you get almost 20 seconds of uptime for this and the cooldown of the spell is 1 minute. It gets even better though, as each Halo grants you a surge of light. Those are the instant cast flash heals that are now empowered by 30% due to other talent that you pick up. So you get to spam these on people that are already taking increased healing from you based on the talent that I showed you previously and every time you consume one of the surges of light, you reduce the cooldown of your holy word sanctify which is your big AoE heal. You also get a choice node which can either increase your damage and healing of all of your halos by 30% and this is probably something that I should have picked because holy priest is the healer that I played the least so I'm not the best holy priest around to put it this way and I don't get much value out of apotheosis. However the other choice node is probably better in that direction as it increases the duration of apotheosis and considering that you have another node that you always pick which simply increases your healing by 10% while apotheosis is active, you can get a lot of value during this cooldown. Now before we jump into conclusions, let's briefly look into some of the other nodes that you have available. Considering how many wasted talents and nodes some of the other hero talents packs actually have, Archon Holy Priest is somewhere in the middle of the pack. Your defensives gives you 5% stamina and that's you only because of your powered fortitude buff, which is not great but it's better than let's say what a Void Weaver Discipline Priest gets. And you have a node that gives you extra haste because of your power infusion and that's you again only. That node is probably much better for Shadow Priest, but we'll take it. And then you have the useless PvP node, which one of the choices is actually something that could see some usage in Mythic Plus. It recasts your fear 4 seconds later on the same location, pretty much the same thing as the shamans have uh, with their capacitor totem. And since fear is on a separate DR from the stuns, you can get lucky and interrupt some extra casts with those duplicated fears. So, as I said, those nodes are not great, but they're better than what some of the other classes are getting, so I guess it's okay. The natural question, of course, is how good is Archon Holy Priest and how does it compare to Oracle? The gameplay actually is quite good and a lot of fun, with the numbers provided by the extra halos being there at the end to justify playing this. Pressing the halo button actually feels amazing because you get the extra healing, you get the surges of light and you feel kinda overpowered in those 10-15-20 to 20 seconds with all the buffs provided from the other talents. However, I have a little bit of criticism here because outside of the halo, the rest of the gameplay feels a little bit dry. All the talents and all the buffs that you're getting are either connected to the halo or the apotheosis. So in the windows while you're waiting one of those two to come back off of cooldown, it kind of feels like there is nothing going on. Having said that though, Halo is a pretty short cooldown, it's just one minute, 
So that's something we can get used to pretty quickly. And I'm saying get used to because I used to play Divine Star all the time. That's something that you cannot do anymore. All those talents revolve around the halo which you need to pick and it's a choice note with Divine Star. So from that perspective this hero talent tree is very restrictive and I think they could have done something to incorporate Divine Star as well. But that's a spell with completely different cooldown so at the end of the day it is what it is. Before we talk about raiding, let's mention the other hero talent option that you have as a holy priest, Oracle. I'm not going to make a separate video for it, because basically I have nothing good to say about it, but that doesn't mean it's actually bad. It gives you a blessing of summer type of spell that changes every time you cast it, and it gives you different buffs every time. Long story short, if you min-max the usages of that spell, you can probably outperform Archon any time of the day. However, for someone like me who plays the priest as an oath, the oracle gameplay style is just overly complicated and I'd rather have some fun and play something like Archon. Out of the two specs, Archon is probably better suited for M+, anyway, I think it's going to perform quite okay in raid as well with the pulsing halos doing a lot of healing and definitely being the easier option of the two to play, but I think it's also going to get easily outperformed by a good Oracle Holy Priest which is timing their premonitions correctly. The only question is how big is going to be that gap between the two hero specs? And in case it's not something humongous, I'm definitely going to pick Archon as my weapon of choice. <laughs> 